Hey guys, what is going on? We are a little less than two weeks away from lobster mini season, which is the last Wednesday and Thursday of July. And then regular lobster season starts on August 6th. So in preparation for lobster season, we always like to go out, look to see where the lobsters are. This is called scouting. There's no guarantee that the lobsters are gonna be in the exact same location that we find them today, but it gives us an idea of the area where they're gonna be at. It gives us time to search for new rocks that maybe we've never found before so that on mini season, we can go out there and get the job done and bring home some lobster dinner. So today I'm gonna to give you as many tips as I possibly can as we're going out there, when we're in the water, showing you where the lobsters are at, the gear that you need, everything that I can think of to help you guys be successful this lobster season. So let's get out on the ocean. All right guys, so we have made it to our favorite area to catch lobsters. I personally have been lobstering since I could basically swim. My dad has been diving since he was like 12 years old in the same area. So I will not be telling you our secret spots, but the first thing you wanna do when you get to your spot is put up your dive flag before you jump in the water. You legally need to have a dive flag on your boat if you are going in the water with a breathing um, device, a breathing apparatus, which is a snorkel, or if you're scuba diving, you need to have a dive flag. People ask all the time, are you afraid of sharks? What's the scariest thing you've seen out there? The thing that you have to worry about when you're in the water is not sharks, is not poisonous fish, is other boats. And the way to protect yourself from other boats and that thing right there, a prop hitting you, is this thing right here. This tells people that you have divers in the water and that they need to stay far away from you or go past you really, really slow. So the weather report was showing some thunderstorms today. And as you can see, the sky is a little bit gray behind me. So hopefully this doesn't come in and affect us today because it's sunny elsewhere, but there is some gray skies and it's definitely raining out there. So fingers crossed we don't get chased out by a thunderstorm. Well, Vic, tell us what just happened. My mask broke. My mask strap broke to be exact. This is why you go and prep before lobster mini season because things like this happen, you don't want to end up being SOL out there on the water. You could ruin your whole day if you don't have a proper working mask. So this stuff will just dry rot. You know, it's in the sun and in the salt. So good to have a spare. Luckily, Brookster had a spare in her bag. So I'm going to swap this guy out here. And let me tell you about this thing right here. Brooke's been selling these on her website. I, for years, watched Brooke and her brothers use these things, and I'm like, I'm not using that thing, that's for a girl. You guys are gonna see when I put this on, what a game changer it is. It's so much easier to put your mask on, even with hair, even with guys' short hair, it doesn't stick to your head. This rubber stuff sticks to your hair like crazy, but with this on, game changer. All right, so Victor is saying that the visibility is very bad. And I can see that from the surface because I can't see anything from the surface. And he said that you can't really see anything until you dive down, which is not good. But it's been pretty rough the last few days. And even the next few days are even gonna be rough as well. So this was kind of our only opportunity to be able to kind of get out here before mini season. But he did say he found one lobster, which normally this spot we can get at least a dozen off of or something like that so maybe because the visibility is bad he's having a little bit of a difficulty finding them but one on this spot is not very good So here's a little tip that my family always does. Victor doesn't like doing this. He prefers to just spit in his mask, but if you use toothpaste and you put a little bit in your mask and then you just smear it around in there and then just when you're about to jump in the water, you rinse it out. It helps your mask from fogging up. They do sell like mask defogging products, but we found that toothpaste works great so we don't bother buying that stuff, we always just buy those little tiny travel toothpaste.
Vic just came up and said he found two more lobsters and that they're big ones, so that's looking better. Tell us about your dive. There's a reason, like Brooke said, why you scout out spots. So this usually is one of the best spots we have for many season. And it looked pretty bleak with lobster. The visibility wasn't too good, but I only saw, I think like three or four, but um, I mean, I'm still having fun. I saw some lobster, saw some fish, saw a nurse shark, big angel fish. It's always exciting when you see those big angel fish. It's almost like they know that you're not gonna hurt them. They just, they're like, yeah, you can take a look at me get some GoPro footage of me, you're not gonna bother me. But they're just these cool, huge fish that just sit and they're just like poking their little eyes out at you, staring at you, and it's almost like they're showing off for you, you know? We're gonna go deeper, check one of our bigger rocks. That's why you gotta scout it out. Everyone always wants to know about lobster spots. And we tell people, there's lobster everywhere. They're always moving. Lobster don't go to the same rock every single time. We go to our best rocks sometimes and get skunked at them. You just gotta have multiple spots in an area and you got to hit every single one and just don't waste your time in one area if you're not seeing them go on to the next one okay so the first spot was around 16 feet deep this one is 23 feet deep i think that the clarity looks better even from this spot for me just looking from the surface sometimes that happens you find a spot where the visibility is really bad and you got to keep looking for better visibility you know maybe some days it could just be really bad and you may not find clean water Sometimes you gotta move around and find that clean water. Could be deeper water, shallower water, you never know. Here we are deeper and the water is clear, so. Only one in the big rock. He says only one so far. Update, three lobsters at this spot, so we have now found like a half a dozen. So from that second spot, he is now just drifting down a reef line that he found, and he just found one more lobster on the reef line. So second dive was a little bit more promising than the first. I think I saw like five or six lobster, a lot clearer. And man, that makes a world of difference when you're diving. If you can't physically see like the structures or rocks from the top, it makes you not want to go down and it makes you not want to check certain things. Like sometimes you can see a lobster's antenna from the surface and that it's a clear indication I got to get down there and look for a lobster. It is my turn to get in the water now. Now we are at a spot that is only 12 feet deep Normally, I'd be jumping in with these two things right here. These are the two tools that I'm telling you, you need to catch lobsters. There's a couple ways to catch lobsters, and this is what I find to be the most efficient. My family has been using these lobster nets for a little over 10 years. My neighbor came up with this design, and then two years ago, he taught me how to make them, and I've been making them and selling them to you guys on my website, floridalobsternets.com. They are hands down the best net you'll ever use. It's clear so the lobster can't see it. The netting is very shallow so you can grab them in the net and then take them out really easily. You don't have to fumble around trying to get your lobster out of one of those really deep nets. It is a very narrow net so you can get in between rocks really easily. It can get really low underneath tall rocks. It's strong, it's durable, there's a lot of pluses to this thing. but. 
I'll play some clips of us actually catching lobsters because today we obviously can't catch them so I'm not going to show you this in action. The other thing I have is this clear tickle stick. It's clear so they also can't see it and it is nice and thick so you can really whack out those lobsters to get them out from under the rock. So what you do with the tickle stick is you tickle them out and then you use this net to net the lobster. People use snares. My family has, I grew up never using a snare. Can't spear lobsters in Florida so you can't do that. And the only other thing you can do is use your hands to grab them from underneath the rock if you like doing that, sticking your arm in the rock. So if you guys are interested in these net and tickle sticks, I sell them on my website floridalobsternets.com. Like I said, I hand make them all. We are getting very close to lobster mini season. So if you're interested in getting these, please place your order soon so that you will get it in time for lobster season. Um, so floralobsternets.com. Thank you to everyone who's already purchased and I hope they bring you many lobster dinners. Now I'm gonna jump in, see what I can find. All right, my turn. I can see it's very clear here. You can literally see the rocks perfect from the surface. So wish me luck. I just spotted my first lobster from the surface, so I'm gonna go down and show you guys. So I spotted him from the surface, and then he disappeared under that rock. So I'm gonna try to see if I can find him from a different point of the rock. He came out the other side. He must know it's not lobster season, and I see at least two of them now. There's at least three lobsters in there. One is really big and then the other two are borderline legal. Those you'd probably have to catch and measure them to make sure that they're legal. But that one that was out in the beginning, that's a big boy. Did you see how you could look above and see their antennas that were sticking out? That's a dead giveaway that those lobsters will do sometimes. You'll see their antennas from the surface, but sometimes you may have to look under all the rocks to actually find the lobsters. Occasionally they'll be sticking out their antennas like that, but not always. Sometimes you have to look under every single rock to find a lobster. There's another one just sticking out of the rock. That's what, number four in this area? That's pretty good for this um, spot. Like I was saying, there's usually, there's usually not many here. It's raining. <laughs> That lobster I didn't even see from the surface. He was sticking out of the rock completely. I didn't even see him from the surface until I went down and then I saw him. Always keep your head on a swivel looking around because you never know where they're going to be. There's some giant parrotfish. Let's see if we can get close.
another lobster. That one is definitely small. He does not look legal. It's pouring! <laughs> He's aggressive. There's another one under that rock. I can only see like an inch of its antenna. But there is a poisonous fish there. Did you guys see it? There are so many beautiful fish here. This spot is pretty incredible. what's happening with the light. There was two more lobsters, big ones, definitely legal. I know I have crazy mask marks. I think my mask may be just a hair too tight, but if I loosen it anymore, then I always feel like it leaks. So this is what I have to live with, some mask marks. But that was an incredible dive. I think I was in the water for like 45 minutes, I think my GoPro said. And wow, 
that is the most fish that I have seen out here on a reef in a long, long time. Sometimes, you know, you come out here and it's almost like sad and discouraging to see the lack of fish on the reef because like I said, we've been diving these reefs forever so you can see the difference of what like the reefs have gone through over the years and that was incredible. When it's not actually lobster season, you don't try as hard to like find the lobsters. You're not looking under every single rock like you would be doing if it was actually lobster season because you know there's not really any point. So I'll be honest, I did a lot of searching from the surface and not really checking under a lot of rocks. So the most of the lobsters I saw, they were sticking out, giving themselves away. So that's why I saw them. When it's lobster season, that's what you gotta do. You gotta check every single rock or you may not catch that lobster dinner. I highly recommend doing this, going out and doing some scouting before lobster season. I will see you guys back at the dock. I'm, go I'm gonna go over some more details and some more gear of what I think you guys should have. So see you there. All right, here we go. Welcome to the backyard, guys. I'm gonna hit you with the rest of the tips that I can think of starting with the most random item that we have displayed here, which is this mouthwash. Now, if you're like us, my family, we store our dive gear in a shed. We don't have room to store it inside. If we could store it inside, that would be nice, but we store it in a shed that has a ton of humidity. And unfortunately, our dive gear gets put away wet sometimes. You know, it's just not in a very like dry place. And because of that, we sometimes get mold in our snorkels. So it hasn't been lobster season since the end of March. So a lot of our dive gear has not been used since then. So it's been sitting for a few months and mold can grow inside of your snorkels. I can almost guarantee you if you do not clean your snorkel, if you have a scenario like we do, that you are going to get a sore throat that first day of diving if you haven't cleaned your dive gear in quite some time. So. Before season, what I always do is I take some mouthwash, take a little cup, you know, and I actually already did this with my snorkel, um, but I can see that I didn't even do that good of a job because I can still see some mold in here. But my snorkel is clear. Victor has a black snorkel, so you can't see it in his snorkel, but you can see it in these clear snorkels. And a lot of these snorkels actually come apart. Always be gentle when doing this, but a lot of these pieces come apart. This mouthpiece can come off, this whole piece can come out off, but get yourself an old toothbrush, get yourself in there some mouthwash, and you're just gonna go to town cleaning all this stuff. It's gonna be nice and minty when you go to use it, but let me tell you, it helps a lot because if you're like us, unfortunately, this can happen if you're storing your stuff like in the garage or in a shed and not inside like an AC house or something like that. Obviously I didn't just do a good job. You need to really get in there and rinse and scrub in there really well. So set this aside now. So staying with talking about your mask and snorkel, if you have never bought a mask before, one of the best things to do is to go to a dive shop and try the masks on. They let you do it. It's what you're supposed to do. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna put the mask on your face, obviously without sunglasses on, and you're going to breathe in. And if you can breathe in and that mask sticks to your face, like sucks into your face, and no air comes through the mask, and then you have a good mask. I'm someone who has a kind of a small shape head. I like a very small, low profile mask. And if I need a new mask, I go to the dive shop and I probably try on 30 and I find one that I like. It is really important to have a good dive mask because you don't wanna be out there diving and having water leaking into your mask. That is like the worst thing ever is when you have a leaky mask all day long emptying the water out of your mask. Another way to prevent that from happening is don't ever share your mask with someone else. If you let someone wear your mask, I guarantee you the next time you put it on, it's gonna leak. Everyone's mask kind of like forms to their face. Everyone's mask is a little bit different, so do not share your mask with someone. Let's say my dad used my mask one day. My dad has a bigger head than me. I guarantee the next time I go to put my mask on, it's not gonna fit my face right, and I'm gonna be extremely upset. So don't ever let anyone use your mask. Your mask is your mask, and everyone else should get their own. Of course, trying to film a video in Pompano Beach, you're gonna get lots of airplanes flying over because we are close to an airport. 
Victor quickly um, talked about mast straps on the boat. Um, mast straps, if you've never had one before, like Victor said, they are literally game changing. When you go to put this on, it's not, it just slides over your hair. That rubber of the mask strap is not ripping your hair out. I couldn't imagine having a mask that doesn't have one of these on it. And it also helps you, you know, if you all get a different color to figure out whose mask is whose on the boat, makes it easier. Maybe someone has a pink one, maybe someone has a yellow, blue, black, you know, makes it easier when your masks are all in a pile and you can figure out which one is yours nice and quick. Um, I do sell these on my website, floralobsternets.com. So you can get mask straps on there. If you don't already have one of these, I promise you are going to love this thing and you'll wonder how you lived your whole life without one if you've never had one before. So I got pink, I matched mine to my snorkel, but yellow, blue, black, those are all on my website. So next thing, we're gonna take our plastic toy lobster here that I've had like my entire life. We literally learned how to catch lobsters in the pool with this thing in a net and we basically just would go down and practice netting the lobster at the bottom of the pool but now it's going to be used to show you how to use a lobster measuring device properly so you legally need to have a lobster gauge on your boat if you are going lobstering if you get pulled over and you don't have one of these on your boat i don't know what happens i'm sure you get a fine or a ticket i don't know you need to have a lobster gauge Lobsters have to be greater than three inches to be able to keep them. So what that means is the head of the lobster, which is called the carapace, needs to be greater than three inches. So your lobster gauge, this gap between here is three inches. So you're gonna put the gauge between the eyes of the lobster, between these two things, which is called the horns. So you're gonna put the front of the gauge between the eyes, between those horns on the hard part of the shell don't get that meat of the eyeballs in there and then the back of the gauge if it falls past the head of the lobster that means the lobster is too short if the back of the gauge touches the head of the lobster then that means that the lobster is over three inches and you can keep it if the gauge falls perfectly touching the back of the head that lobster is three inches, which technically is illegal because it needs to be greater than three inches. So always make sure that the back of your gauge is touching the head still and not falling past the head into just like nothing, like towards the tail, because then that means that the head of the lobster is less than three inches and it's too small. I also sell these lobster gauges on my website, floralobsternuts.com. You need to get a lobster gauge to legally be catching lobsters. So. Next thing, so I, I talked about on the boat my um, lobster net and tickle stick to be able to catch the lobsters. You can also grab the lobsters with your hands under the rock like I had said before. Get yourself a good pair of gloves. Don't go out there without gloves. It literally drives me nuts when I see people trying to go lobstering who don't wear gloves. I can't imagine. A lobster is literally covered in spines that will rip your hands open if you're trying to catch these things without wearing any gloves. So please, please get yourself a pair of gloves. Don't get yourself a pair of gardening gloves because the spines of the lobster are gonna go right through your gardening gloves and it's gonna be like you're not wearing any gloves. This is what I'm talking about. Do not get yourself one of these things because it's basically like not wearing a glove. Don't use one of these like a gardening glove. Get yourself a nice pair of gloves. These are um, hammerhead spear gun gloves. These have gone through actually a few seasons, so I absolutely love these gloves. I would love to be sponsored by them, but I'm not sponsored, but these gloves are amazing. I'll have a link in the description to all of these things that you guys see. So real quickly, a lot of times people ask me like, how do you use that net because they've never seen it used before? Once you use your tickle stick to get your lobster out from under the rock, you're gonna put this behind the tail of the lobster and you're gonna lower it down on top of them and then you're gonna take your hand with your glove on and then you're gonna grab your lobster in the net just like this. And then just like that, drop it right out of the net. That's why the shallow net is so convenient because you can get them in and out of the net very easily, but back of the tail, tail of the lobster at the back of the net, lower it down, grab it. They never see it coming because it's clear and I promise you these things work amazing. So I think that's all that I have for you guys. I hope everyone has a very safe and fun lobster season this year. Be safe out there. That is the most important thing is to be safe and to have fun. And I hope you guys bring home some lobster for dinner. 
and stay tuned for my videos because we're gonna be going out there with my whole family like usual. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I will see you in the next video.